Hi, my name is Michael Richardson. This is the second of two videos on Brewski or bootstrapping remote key infrastructure. This video will deal with how does the Brewski work in an ISP or an IoT mesh. So how does Brewski work in an ISP network? Um, typically, a device is drop shipped to a new location and it's and is plugged in by some uh, remote hands who may not know anything about the device except they have a list of things to uh, attach, cables to attach, things to plug in, and then the you know, ideal of Brewski is that it just shows up in the knock, just like that. So here's a new pledge, new device, a, a router, um, been installed in a network. It's the one with the little blue, light blue bottom. And as recalled before, every device comes with an IDEV ID, an 8021AR certificate from the manufacturer. And let's assume this is a new network. How does this device bootstrap uh, onto the network when its peers may not also be bootstrapped yet, or it may not have a direct connection? So let's assume all of these devices are new, and let's observe what happens when an ISP turns on their equipment one by one. So if we've got all these certificates, everyone's got one, and we have a network operations center, and it has a registrar. So one of the key things is that the registrar runs what's called a join proxy. This is a little green router icon with a little duck attached to it, and it provides a relay uh, mechanism between an IPv6 link local uh, connection and the registrar itself. And we just assume for simplicity that the registrar runs one himself, and that just simplifies the protocol why everyone runs one. That's appropriate. So there's that's the join proxy there, and we have a network that connects a bunch of things. In fact, we have a bunch of cables plugged in in some assortment of things. Let's think of these routers as different devices in maybe different cities or data centers, and uh, the network operations center is, is the, the ISP or enterprise's headquarters. So to make things more interesting, we've added a pink router um, that the new device is connected to, and it's some other peer sitting in the network. Perhaps it's in an IX or something like this. So registrar announces itself. It uses a protocol called GRASP. It's a discovery protocol and the registrar says, hey, I'm here on I speak Brewski and if you want to do Brewski, contact me. And so three of the devices say, oh, yes, I want to do Brewski and they make a connection and as in indicated in the, in the previous video. And things happen and guess what? They get an LDEF ID uh, given to them um, and that's wonderful. Um, they are now enrolled into the into the network and the network operations center can see them and can, can se securely manage them. So what next? What happens? Well, uh, the routers are, each one of these now run a join proxy. So they now say, hey, I'm a join proxy and I can connect you to the registrar. And so they each say this to the, the next uh, layer of of routers and one of them here says oh I'm gonna connect so the red wire red line indicates that the connection happens over an IPv6 uh, link layer connection it's TLS from end to end um, and the green connection occurs over the anima autonomic control plane which is a secure VPN overlay it's not covered in this video um, and so this vi this router gets enrolled and gets its LDEV ID. Isn't that awesome? And the next router comes along and says, oh yes, I'm going to enroll and it can enroll this way or it could enroll that way. Those are two different options that, that, that there and um, it can pick but one or both and the registrar essentially is going to re re recognize that it's no point in onboarding the same device twice and so it uh, picks one or the other and it onboards it. So that next layer gets uh, uh, comes along and we get um, the certificates for each device there, that one and that one, and they all get their certificates and they all turn on uh, join proxies. So here we go. Here's the third one that got it in that layer and uh, everyone's uh, available and it goes on. So now we're finally ready to talk about the new pledge, the device there. So this is what the static situation is. The network is operating, everyone's securely connected and the pledge comes along and it wants to know what's going on. So these guys announce, 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 you guessed it, but here's a little bit more. This guy probably also is part of a autonomic network that belongs to a different ISP or a different enterprise. And it's got a joint proxy and it announces. 
Well, the pledge could reasonably be quite confused because it's just been come from the factory. It has no idea which device and which enterprise it belongs to itself, and it hears uh, four announcements. So what does it do? Well, it makes a connection, it makes another connection, it makes another connection, and it makes a fourth connection. All of those connections are TLS. They are what we call provisional TLS because the pledge isn't quite sure who its connection is to. And along all of them, it sends a voucher request, as the previous video showed. And along some of them, it will get a response. So the voucher requests go up to the MASA. And uh, the first registrar, well, it kind of realizes no point in sending three identical voucher requests. So it doesn't do that. It sends a single one up to the MASA. And the other uh, operation center says, well, I don't know. This could be my device, too. Maybe I've bought something. Do I know it's there or not? They may know it's not a serial number that they bought, but let's assume for the moment they did. They're not sure, and they contact it anyway, and the MASA makes a decision. So it looks at its, basically its list of who did I sell what to whom, and it realizes that ISP2 is not the owner. So it severs that connection, and that connection dies as well. And the pledge does not receive a voucher from ISP2, but does receive it from ISP1. The ISP, the new device, gets its local certificate. It pops up into the NOC, um, and they apply uh, some kind of a, a profile for a router, which is going to be on the edge of the network. And that probably involves turning on OSPF, and maybe it involves a BGP session with this pink router, because in fact, it was at an IX or a private peering point, and that's what it should be doing. That's all. This is how Brewski works to bootstrap devices. You can see that the same thing can work for a, um, a uh, IoT LLN mesh, where these are basically all routers anyway. Um, they're just much, much smaller. Thank you.